Thousands of people were injured when beepers across Lebanon simultaneously exploded in an unprecedented attack that was reportedly carried out by Israel. The paging devices belong to members of Hezbollah, who use the more rudimentary communication methods to evade surveillance. According to Reuters and the New York Times, Israel executed the attacks by tampering with the shipment of beepers before they were delivered to Lebanon. Quote, the explosive material, as little as one to two ounces, was implanted next to the battery in each pager. A switch was also embedded that could be triggered remotely to detonate the explosives. At 3.30 p.m. in Lebanon, the pagers received a message that appeared as though it was coming from Hezbollah's leadership. Instead, the message activated the explosives. Videos from Lebanon on social media captured some of those explosions and show individuals suffering grievous wounds. Most of the injuries are to the hands and face. There are reports that there are not enough eye specialists in the country right now to deal with the mass of injuries. And what's disturbing about the attack is how likely civilians were to be injured in it. When the trigger was sent to explode the beepers, it's impossible to know who was holding them at the time and who was around them. According to Lebanese health officials, 2,700 people were injured, 200 critically, 11 people have died so far, including an 8-year-old girl who I'm guessing wasn't a Hezbollah fighter. Also injured in the attack was Iran's ambassador to Lebanon, thus increasing the likelihood of yet another escalation in the region. A day before the operation, Israeli officials threatened to escalate their military campaign against Lebanon. The two countries have been engaged in low-grade warfare since last October. The Prime Minister of Lebanon accused Israel of, quote, criminal aggression, and the Foreign Minister vowed to retaliate, saying, quote, Hezbollah are definitely going to retaliate in a big way. How? Where? I don't know. Israel hasn't commented on the attacks, meaning they haven't denied involvement either. State Department spokesperson Matthew Miller said that the U.S. was not involved or aware of the operation, but according to Axios, Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant called his U.S. counterpart, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin, on Tuesday to tell him that Israel was about to conduct an operation in Lebanon. So the U.S. did have advanced knowledge and does know who carried out the attacks, despite claims of ignorance. Either way, Washington's closest allies are implicated, not just Israel, but also Taiwan. The pagers were ordered from a tech company in Taiwan known as Gold Apollo, and they had the company's branding on them. Gold Apollo is now claiming, though, that it had nothing to do with the attacks, and that it was actually a different manufacturer in Europe named BAC that produced the pagers through a licensing deal. BAC is based in Budapest and has not released any sort of comment on the matter yet. One tip-off that U.S. allies were involved in this is the utter lack of condemnation coming from the State Department and Pentagon. I mean, here we have an unprecedented and particularly heinous attack that turned thousands of people in Lebanon into human bombs that blew up simultaneously. And now you've got civilians in Lebanon afraid to pick up their phones, fearing that they may be sabotaged. If this were any adversary of the U.S., condemnations would be flying from the podium. Instead, this is what we heard, first from the State Department, then the Pentagon. I just don't want to uh, offer any type of assessment uh, on this incident one way or the other at this point. So I want to be very clear that I'm not answering with specific, uh, with any specificity regarding this incident because we're continuing to gather facts on it. But in general, yes, of course we support uh, uh, operations to target Hezbollah militants who continue to launch terrorist attacks against civilians. Um, Israel has a right to defend itself against terrorism and a right to carry out legitimate attacks against terrorists. Ethically speaking, as a military officer, is this a capability that falls within the ethical conduct of a war? I'm not a lawyer. I'm, I'm not, again, going to do a spot analysis on uh, something that we've seen in press reports. I, I just don't have any information to provide on that. 
Shouldn't be surprising that when you let Israel get away with doing a genocide in Gaza, its government feels invincible enough to engage in large-scale international terrorism. Hey, thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of our new videos. Also, if you want to see Means Morning News in its complete form, not just the clips we post here, head on over to Means TV and get access to all our new episodes and our entire backlog, plus tons of other great movies and original TV shows.